first of all, and I guess I would have, have uh, two basic points to make. The um, first is that a funder, funder-induced or funder-forced collaborations are generally not successful. So even as a, if as a funder you are frustrated by looking at what might be a lot of duplication and, and um, inefficiency in, in, a, in an area of your interest, to mandate that, that organizations collaborate is, might yield some short-term results, but normally if, if the best collaborations are uh, sustained when they are formed organically by the organizations themselves. Which leads to the second point, is foundations have the power to, to set a stage to encourage collaboration and do it in a non-threatening way. They can convene their grantees around um, common subjects. They can share, to share best practices. Collaborations really evolve through the development of trust. They're like any relationship, and the collaboration is a complex relationship. It's like a marriage and um, it takes time to develop and to be nurtured. And so just bringing people together for a common purpose starts, can start the conversations that lead to trust. Foundations also have the power, because they're interested in generally in specific issues, to um, convene stakeholders around an issue, including their grantees, maybe not their grantees, maybe government and other stakeholders. And again, it's, it's the power to bring everybody together to, dis to start discussing an issue, an issue where everybody then focuses on the goal, which is to move the needle in the community to make um, to maximize impact, and that then leads to, um, can lead to discussions about where are the natural alliances and partnerships that help uh, maximize impact. So I think foundations have a role to play in nurturing and crea creating and nurturing an environment that encourages collaboration.